Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Justin Bennett here posting this. Now, guys, we have to be ready for this situation if it occurs. This is mind-blowing. He says the S&P 500 is mimicking the 2008 stock crash. Even the timing since the all-time high is nearly identical. The bottom is not in for stocks or crypto. This is what he's warning here. Now, what he's posting is uh, the current trend here. This is the crypto market. And um, as you guys know, we have been seeing this pattern where we have been going up, but we have not seen higher highs yet on the uh, on the longer time frame. And what he's doing is he's comparing it. He took a fractal pattern from the 2008 crash of the S&P 500, and he's noticing some similarities here. Okay, 309 bars since the all-time high. This is uh, where we currently are at with cryptocurrency. Compare that to 318 bars uh, since the all-time high. This is on the S&P chart from 2008 when we saw the rebound, this relief rally, before the market plummeted even further. Now, bringing up the S&P 500, uh, you guys can see this uh, pattern that was uh, just demonstrated over here on this uh, graphic. You can see this pattern. I pointed this out yesterday, actually. Coincidentally, I just pointed this out yesterday, the Fibonacci here on the S&P 500, and how we're getting uh, close to the 0.618. Okay, we're getting fairly close over here to the 0.618. We have surpassed the 0.5 over here. Um, and what happened back in 2008, okay, just to give you guys some context here, to give you guys a sense of what uh, he's talking about here, 2008, if we take the top right up here, bring it down to this bottom, and this retracement, okay, where are we, or where were we in at this point in time, back in uh, mid-2008, we had surpassed the 0.5, and uh, had not quite reached the 0.618. So you guys can see how this is similar. From there, of course, we did continue crashing further down, right down to the depths. And what he's suggesting is if the S&P collapses, uh, crypto and stocks are going to follow along. Now, I mean, guys, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but this is a potential scenario that we could see. Um, as we know, just taking a look at the Bitcoin chart, guys, this is Bitcoin on the daily trading right now at 23,400. As we know, we've already seen this correction for Bitcoin, right? The 74, 75% give or take correction. We have rebounded up. So now Bitcoin's down about 65% since it's all time high. But this is not really commensurate with what we have seen in the past. Former Bitcoin bear markets, they have gone down 80, 85% give or take. The last bear market here, 2018 was down 84%. And, uh, you know, if we were to take this bear market too, the one from 2013, we saw that down 86, almost 87%. So, I mean, 85% would actually bring us, or rather 80%, would actually bring us right in and around here. This level of support, which, uh, which we found back in June of 2019, that would ultimately be an 80% retracement for the King Crypto. So, could we see another leg down based on what Justin Bennett is suggesting here? I don't know, but these are all things we should be paying attention to. I mean, this is why I'm still holding a portion of my cash on the sidelines. I did recently purchase a stack of Algorand uh, at around 35.5. Right now, Algorand's trading at 34.4. So I purchased it in and around here. My rationale for that was, uh, you know, we were seeing basing for a while. There are a lot of other factors to suggest that uh, this was stabilizing, and so I just thought, now's the time for me to get into my uh, to my stablecoin position. However, I only put in 50% of my capital, and I'm waiting. If there is another downturn, I'm waiting to scoop more up. Uh, not to say that it is going to happen for sure, but you know, just to keep an eye on the prize. XRP right now trading at 0.377, and uh, you know, of course, very, very attractive entry point for XRP. Um, if XRP goes down even further, could we see it go back down below 20 cents? I mean, it is possible. We have seen it in the past. I think this would be predicated on a situation like this. If we did see entire markets collapse even further, it would not be anything specific to cryptocurrency. So it's a matter of, do you have faith in the markets or not? What we do know is that there is something fundamentally wrong with the current financial system. And apparently, way back in 2014 to 2015, CBDCs were proposed to the Fed. Okay, guys, this is Aaron Wright, and in an interview, he mentioned global interoperability to the Fed. Okay, this was brought to us by Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox on Twitter. Listen to this. Uh, in part because I got into this so early, I, I, I proposed back to the Fed um, and a bunch of researchers there back in like 2014 or 15. Um, uh, pretty much like a 
the, people didn't call it that it at the time, but like a permission blockchain for central bank digital currencies. Uh, they came to a group of researchers and said, if we hypothetically wanted to digitize the dollar, what would that look like? And what we said is, look, you can start with a permission blockchain. Um, it can be, you know, pan jurisdiction. So it's not just for the US dollar, but for a whole bunch of other uh, currencies. So you get that interoperability, right? You get things like we see on Ripple, et cetera. Also note that he mentions Ripple, et cetera, as one of those examples of a, you know, the type of company that was doing it at that time. It's interesting, 2014, 15, this was way before we were getting any sort of uh, real mainstream interest in cryptocurrencies from any federal organization, really. This clip just continues on with Gary Gensler talking about uh, XRP being a bridge currency. I've uh, showed this clip on my channel in the past. Anyway, I will link this in the description of the video. I thought it was interesting because Aaron Wright here stating that back in 2014 or 2015, he already did approach the Fed about this concept. Now it seems like everybody was sitting on for another seven or eight years. Fast forward to today, guys, and I saw this from Michael Branch. The Federal Reserve Governor pumps the brakes on US CBDCs in favor of, guess what, Fed now. So here's the latest news, guys, coming out from the Federal Reserve. A leader at the Federal Reserve is pumping the brakes on speculation surrounding crypto engagement from the regulator. In an August 17th speech, Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman took issue with many key areas of the Fed's work and its crossover with fintech and crypto industry concerns. Key among them is the push for a U.S. central bank digital currency. So I'm really glad the Fed is, uh, you know, pumping the brakes on this, realizing, whoa, 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 maybe we don't need this. And the reasons I think very appealing for XRP holders specifically, the subject of much political speculation, uh, a dollar, a digital dollar has grown increasingly contentious over the past year. Well, you know, we've got a lot of other uh, central banks around the world pushing their CBDCs, so I could see why the Fed is monitoring this quite closely. Bowman said that the Fed's plans for Fed now will fill the niche many envision for a US CBDC. Well, the great thing about Fed now is that it is powered by Volente. Whether it's Volente specifically or Volente's Volpe, I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't I don't have the article up uh, specifying which one it is. Actually, I'll, let me just bring it up. Right, it was here from back in February of 2021. Ripple client Volente Technologies joins the Federal Reserve's Fed Now Payments pilot. Since then, they decided to implement Ripple's technology. So it was Volente Technologies. Volpe is just uh, a subsidiary of that. So FedNow will fill the niche for CBDCs. Clearly, they're they're realizing they do not need to have a separate entity that would be a, a CBDC-driven mechanism, or rather a CBDC, a US CBDC. The FedNow service will enable financial institutions of every size and in every community across America to provide safe and efficient instant payment services. It is intended to be a flexible, neutral platform that will support a broad variety of instant payments, Bowman said. My expectation is that FedNow addresses the issues that some have raised about the need for a central bank digital currency. Bowman also took an oblique pot shot at the crypto industry's hope for banks working with crypto assets. I'm hearing more discussions involving banks' interests in offering services involving crypto assets. The chatter seems to originate more from those outside the banking industry, but I'll put that aside for now. The bigger thing here, guys, and the thing that I think XRP holders should be really excited about is that the Fed is saying we are stepping away from this idea of a central bank digital currency, something that I think, um, you know, a lot of people in other countries are hoping that their governments would do. And the Fed is saying we've got Fed now. That's going to fill that void, that need, because with Fed now enabling Volente technology, which is Ripple enabled, we are basically able to transfer anything of value from point A to point B. So... An interesting uh, little update here. Wanted to thank Michael Branch and Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox for those tweets. Another one here, guys, from Wheezy. Despite what is going on, we are still in the midst of a lawsuit, and even only just a couple of months after the Hinman speech, this is how confident Joe Lubin was that Ripple wasn't necessarily a competitor of theirs. If other protocols that trade speed for centralization, um, for, or, or speed or centralization, I guess, for security is really the issue here. Yeah. Gain adherence in the interim between now and then. I'm thinking about Ripple, for example, or I'm thinking about EOS. So Ripple isn't really a blockchain technology. It's a sort of a payment system. Uh, so I, I don't really consider okay. that a competitor. Whoa, don't really consider them a competitor. Isn't that convenient? Could it be, Joseph Lubin, that uh, you have the SEC in your back pocket? This brought to us by Stefan Hubert retweeting out this John Deaton tweet from back in February. How ETH became the only game in town 
we received a tiny bit more of the Hinman deposition. He sent an email to Joe Lubin. Yeah, that's right. William Hinman sent an email to Joe Lubin. We don't know which meeting with Lubin the email referred to, but guys, here's the transcript right here. Okay. Directing your attention to the email you sent to Joe Lubin that's reflected on the page of Exhibit 17 that ends with 1454. Do you see wrote to Mr. Lubin at 206? Uh, this, by the way, is a deposition from William Hinman. He responds, yes. Then the next question, did Chairman Clayton ask you to reach out to Mr. Lubin? And the answer, not to my recollection. So it wasn't even directed by uh, Commissioner Clayton at the time. William Hinman did decide to send an email to Joe Lubin. And I mean, Stefan Hubert just pointing it out, obviously, best threat ever about Lubin having the SEC in his back pocket. And two months after, he did not see Ripple as a competition. Now, just yesterday, Vitalik Buterin decided to come onto Twitter and voice his opinion on how the government should regulate XRP. In a recent tweet, Vitalik Buterin claims that XRP, the sixth biggest cryptocurrency, lost its right to protection after Ripple attempted to throw Ethereum under the bus as a China-controlled cryptocurrency. At the same time, the Ethereum co-founder said that he was glad that people were pushing against regulations that prioritize Ethereum over other legitimate cryptocurrencies. So this has gained a lot of attention uh, in the crypto space. Here is the tweet uh, specifically from Vitalik Buterin. Glad to see Ethereum people pushing against regulations that privilege ETH over other legitimate cryptocurrencies. Uh, and then he puts in parentheses, I have not dug into the details of what specifically is going on and to what extent it's a government thing versus a compliance decision or a business one, but either way. And so he's retweeting out David Hoffman's tweet here. Uh, of course, David Hoffman responding, if they had restricted XRP, I wouldn't have said anything. Vitalik saying, and here's where he was getting a little saucy. XRP already lost their right to protection when they tried to throw us under the bus as China controlled. Retweeting out that tweet that he posted back uh, in December, right when the XRP, or December 2020, right when the Ripple SEC lawsuit was announced. Looks like the Ripple slash XRP team is sinking to new levels of strangeness. They're claiming that their crap coin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled. And so, you know, a lot of people wondering how the Ripple team is going to respond to this, like XRP LeBrock Holy here. You guys want to respond to this? Tagging uh, Brad Carlinghouse, Chris Larson, Hammertoe, Matt Hamilton, uh, Joel Katz, and John Deaton. David Schwartz actually responded to this. The government should punish projects that disagree with our narrative. He puts that in quotes, and he says, that seems pretty on brand for Ethereum. Also, I do think it's perfectly fair to analogize miners and proof of work systems to uh, stockholders and companies, just as eBay's stockholders earn from residual friction between buyers and sellers that eBay does not remove. So do miners in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Just as eBay stockholders want to leave as much friction between buyers and sellers as they can because that's their revenue stream, so do miners in Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's part of why they have higher fees than the XRP ledger. Boom goes the dynamite. Obviously, there is an incentive for uh, the mining, and apparently the gas fees are not actually going to go down once the merge happens. I also saw an article regarding that. Uh, I don't have it up here right now. Here, let me just find it real quickly. Here was this one here brought to us by Doddler for XRP. Ethereum Foundation clarifies that upcoming merge upgrades will not actually reduce the gas fees. So if you thought that uh, it was going to reduce gas fees, guess again, this was according to a new clarification by the Ethereum Foundation on Wednesday. The network's upcoming proof of stake transitory upgrade dubbed the merge will not reduce gas fees. Here's the quote. Gas fees are a product of network demand relative to the network's capacity. The merge deprecates the use of proof of work, transitioning to proof of stake for consent but does not significantly change any parameters that directly influence network capacity or <laughs> throughput. So basically we've got a merge and it uh, is still going to be an expensive platform to transact on. John Deaton also adding his two cents to this comment uh, from Vitalik Buterin. You would think someone who belongs on the Mount Rushmore of crypto would understand that XRP is software code. Vitalik are you saying that the 72,000 XRP holders that I represent don't deserve to be protected? These holders have nothing to do with Ripple or Brad Garlinghouse. Shame on you. If you are a true leader, you will clarify that you do not mean innocent holders of XRP who have nothing to do with Ripple. Remember that article you wrote for Bitcoin Magazine. Recall the positive things you said about XRP in the past. Maybe someone bought XRP listening to you. 
For the record, when Ripple made the comments about BTC and ETH being Chinese-controlled technologies, I was critical and disagreed. I said that I understood that they were fighting for their very existence, and the SEC selective enforcement was outrageous, but we must unite. John Deaton here just spewing truth, of course. Vitalik Buterin has a big responsibility, um, you know, as the head of Ethereum, he is the face of that particular cryptocurrency, same as Charles Hoskinson's, is the face of Cardano, and of course the elusive Satoshi Nakamoto, the face or shadow behind Bitcoin, but he's the person that speaks out for Ethereum and is shaping Ethereum's reputation. So, you know, when he's going on the record and saying stuff like that, um, it doesn't look good for the, for the Ethereum Foundation, it doesn't look good for this particular project, especially when we know his history, when he did write that article for Bitcoin Magazine, singing Ripple and XRP's praises. Um, some are suggesting he might be a little bitter because he didn't get that internship at Ripple back in 2013 or 14 or whenever it was. Then he went on to start Ethereum. Anyway, don't want to dwell too much on this. I want to keep moving, guys, because there's some bigger news here with regards to the financial market, all right? Linda P. Jones posting this. Nothing to see here. Retweeting out Michael's tweet at MikeSay98. Gold is flying off the COMEX like never before. The 50-day and 100-day average rates of gold withdrawal I have never seen as high as they are now, and they continue to accelerate. Okay, this is August 2021 compared to August 2022, all right? Take a look at the 50-day and the 100-day, surpassing 125,000 troy ounces of gold right up here. We are seeing this move like never before, and I have a feeling we know why. XCON down here saying, I like seeing it, asset-backed financial system incoming. So there's the speculation that we are going to see a new financial system backed by gold. Um, you know, this is not anything new. Of course, we have the Russia thing. Russia proposes a new international standard for trading in precious metals. The Moscow World Standard will become an alternative to the London Bullion uh, Market Association, which systematically manipulates precious metal markets to depress prices. So Russia and the BRICS countries, they are fighting back in a lot of ways, getting together, creating uh, their own reserve currency that they are going to be trading in. And it's looking like it's going to be backed by gold. I talked a little bit about this over the last few months. I'll see if I can dig up a video uh, with regards to Russia and the BRICS countries specifically moving on to this standard. Uh, if you guys want to get a better idea of what I'm uh, of what I'm talking about, this is an ongoing event that has to do with broader financial markets, and it is going to influence a lot of things, so I like to touch back on this every now and then. I'll see if I can find a video, and I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. It's different this time saying the calm before the inevitable storm. Russia proposes the new international standard for trading in precious metals. So they want to have some system in place where trade is based on their currency or their basket of currencies, a new world reserve or rather a new BRICS reserve currency perhaps that'll be on a precious metal standard. Of course, gold going to be one of those major precious metals. Uh, Michael Rigoni down here saying same chart for silver, please. Or asking rather same chart for silver, please. Michael down here saying right now, I'm focusing on posting charts that display data I find to be interesting or showing a major pattern. And silver isn't currently experiencing the same yet, he asks. So an interesting thread, uh, an interesting observation here. Wanted to thank at Mike Say 98 here and uh, Linda P. Jones originally for tweeting this out. It's interesting because Peter Schiff, the gold bug himself, like him or hate him, guys, he just came out in an interview suggesting this. Now, this posted by Ian G here on Twitter. Peter Schiff, are you talking about XRP? Gold plus XRP equals check mark. It's the first time I've heard Peter Schiff talk about there being possibilities with cryptocurrency. So to put it into context, Peter Schiff, a gold bug, but now he's saying there could be a crypto-related gold standard that will facilitate payments worldwide. Listen to this. Where I think there is some you know, room is with blockchain and that technology because you could certainly have a crypto currency backed up by gold and you could transact in that and that would be both a store of value and a uh, efficient unit of exchange uh, and 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 uh, a medium of exchange rather and unit of account so that 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 could happen whether the governments allow it to happen we'll see they may uh, try to prevent it because that would be a real threat to the fiat based system we have now. But if you remember, before there was a Federal Reserve, how did currency come into existence in the United States? It was created by private central, by private banks that operated all around the country. They issued their own note currency and all of it was backed by gold. That's how it worked. And in fact, the original Federal Reserve notes, they were backed by gold too, you know, uh, and they were redeemable in gold. So we were on 
a gold standard both before the Federal Reserve was created and after. But the original note currency was put into circulation by private companies. So, so the same thing could happen again, except instead of paper currency, you would use a digital currency. Private companies could put digital currency into circulation, just like they've done now, except instead of putting fiat digital currencies in, they could put legitimate digital currencies in, those that are backed by gold. And that would make them similar to the type of currency that was issued you know, before the Federal Reserve, except even more efficient when it comes to the ability to utilize them as a medium of exchange. Because you know you, you you would have a digital token that you can transfer instantaneously anywhere in the world instead of you know just having a, a bill or having to use a checkbook or something like that. So you can get all of the uh, benefits of uh, blockchain. So now we have Peter Schiff going on the record saying there will be or likely will be a blockchain that uh, is going to be central to this new financial system. There is going to be a cryptocurrency that is likely going to be backed by gold that will essentially transfer anything of value from point A to point B. Boy, does that not sound like the perfect use case for the XRP ledger to you. He's not naming it by name, but uh, you know, I can see others in the XRP community are realizing the same thing like Riz XRP down here, a perfect fit. Anything of value being transferred on the blockchain and uh, you know, this idea that XRP could be backed by gold, that concept has been floating around uh, crypto Twitter and in the XRP community as well. So is it a possibility? Is it an eventuality that we are going to see this happen? Is this what's going to get the price of XRP moving up? Keep in mind, this coming from the Gold Telegraph, Russia is proposing its own international standard for precious metals. India has launched an international gold exchange, a newly licensed, is that the Nigerian flag? Commodities exchange is now trading in gold. Pakistan considering establishing gold refineries and China produces the most gold. Are you not entertained? And now looking twice at this, uh, I do not think that is the Pakistan flag. Put it down in the comments if you know what it is. The BRICS countries and their allies are getting on board with a new gold standard. And Peter Schiff is also saying cryptocurrency and blockchain, this is what's going to facilitate cross-border payments and transactions of value from point A to point B. Will XRP be the gold standard? It certainly is a popular hypothesis, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.